connection between the coefficients and dimensions of representations of the monster suggested that there might exist an infinite set of vector spaces which provide a module for the monster with the dimension of Vm being a coefficient Am in this expansion. Now, if that's the case, then I can also write this as a sum of the dimension of Vm. And I can regard that as the trace of the identity operator acting on Vm to Vm. And writing it that way, and the connection with the beautiful representation of the monster, suggests that there is a generalization of what we consider where you replace the identity operator with the general element of the monster and this clearly depends only on the conjugacy class of G Did I do something wrong? G this clearly depends only on the conjugacy class of G. And given a set of supposed decompositions and the character table of the monster, you can compute these. And that's what Conway and Norton did, following early suggestions of McKay and Thompson. And what they found were that these, and this was a way of fixing the ambiguities of decompositions is that they found that these McKay Thompson series were what are called health modules for certain subgroups of PSL to R, and that they were all of um, genus zero. Meaning that the quotient of the upper half plane by gamma g can be mapped to the Riemann sphere at the higher number of points, and that these functions generate function fields uh, invariant under the action of gamma g. And they gave a description of what these groups were. So the modularity properties of these allowed you to fix the decomposition, and, but, but didn't really explain what was going on. And it would be wonderful if there were some hidden uh, 
exceptional structures and supersymmetry in application of string theory that would give us some additional clues about how to apply string theory to the real world. That's extremely speculative, but the current examples involving K3 and M24 are certainly a step in, in that possible direction. All right, so now let me say a little bit about the connection between K3 and M24, which is not going to be so, if I'm given a K3 surface, that is associated with that, a single model, with four kind of four uh, world shape super conformal invariants, and one can in the Malone sector of the superconformal algebra. As in Don's talk, Q is equal to 2 pi i tau, and Z is equal to 2 pi i y. I'm sorry, Y is equal to 2 pi i um, And you can take this Jacobi form, which is the elliptic genus, and there are two different paths you can take, which in this particular case turn out to be the same thing. One path that you can take is you can construct a meromorphic Jacobi form. I think what C and A are the same as in Don. So this guy is in, I think what Don called J meromorphic 1, 2. And this has a decomposition 
into a free part or a polar part. And one can do a fade decomposition <coughs> of a free part. Or one can do a decomposition into characters of the n equals force of the conformal algebra. And if you do that, then this has an expression in terms of a set of what are called massless characters. And then the sum Right, but 
as I was saying, I have to believe those have discriminants which are not orders of infinite form, so this positive is not hold. So the next topic on the outline is to talk about the overall extension. And as Don explained, the word shadow in the theory of Mach Weidler's forms explains that there's something kind of dark going on there. And so, shadows, of course, can occur in a astronomical context. <laughs> so here's the sun and here's the earth. And if I have the sun and the earth, <laughs> then depending on where you sit, you'll see different kinds of images. So this is called the umbra. It's the darkest part of the shadow. And as you either move further back so that you see the Earth blocking out just the ring of the sun, you get into what's called the antumbra. And if you move to the side, you're then in the penumbra. So we call this umbral moonshine because the shadows play a crucial role. And as more light is shed on this subject, it gives us the possibility of having papers called penumbral moonshine. <laughs> Yes. 
the H2 of how that I wrote down before, um, 24 beta cubed, and the group M24, and the Jacobi form is just dealing with the genus of J3. So um, I have to tell you where these HL come from. And they come from what we define to be an extremal Jacobi form. And by extremal, our definition is that this has an expansion 
in terms of n equals 4 characters. The idea, I think, being that these should correspond to black hole states in some gravitational dual. And as far as I know, the only example of an extremely controlled field that's actually known to exist currently is the monster moonshine control field theory. Um, Greg and collaborators look at a generalization of <coughs> extremal um, super controlled field theories. And one can define the elliptic index in those theories, but this is not the elliptic, elliptic index of an extremal super controlled field theory. However, it has a similar property in that there are massless contributions, and then there's a gap to the massive ones, and none of the massive states contribute terms that have negative powers of the G. So there is some similarity to the idea of an extremal controlled field theory, but it's not exact. So, in our paper, we prove a proposition, and that proposition is that if m is between 2 and 25, the dimension of the space of these extremal Jacobi forms is equal to 1, in case m minus 1 divides 12, and it's equal to 0 otherwise. And we conjecture that the dimension of the space is zero for m greater than 25, but we have not done that. So whether you like this or not, it is a condition that picks out a very special set of weight zero and uh, index L minus 1 Jacobi forms for L minus 1 and divisor 12. And given this special set of Jacobi forms, we then can turn this crank to produce a set of monotonic forms. And then I claim that we will be able to associate groups to each one of these. So given So the generalization 
is more mathematical than physical at this point. For that reason. Can you just very quickly repeat the definition? It's extremal if all properties for this decomposition. If the if it has an equal for decomposition in the form that I wrote. But just the existence of that decomposition, not some of the decomposition of the decomposition. No. However, uh, let me say this in a way that might be a little more intelligible. So if you look at the Q expansion of the HLR for an extremal Jacobi form, there is one polar term in the form Q to minus 1 over 4L at R equals 1, and none for R greater than 1. That's probably the reason. R is become up to about 80 again. And the list is all the ends of the end of one minus 24, 6 and 10. That's the same list. But it's a bigger list than yours, so that's why it's puzzled. Uh, well, I think, well, let's discuss it out here, because I think I know what I think I know how to correct it. So this, this is true if only if n belongs to the set asset, the bigger set. So this can't be good. No, I think, I think the example that you have it, for example, at L equals 6, actually has a polar term at R equals 1 and a polar term at R equals 5. Because I, I looked at it. Yeah, well, okay. You actually mean, you don't mean just delta equals minus minus. No, I don't mean delta equals minus one, I mean R. So only in the first component of this guy says there's a polar term, and there's not in the higher components. And the guy at L equals 6 has two different components with polar terms in it. So it's not a reverse. Okay, so for each Jacobi form, we get an object like this, and we get a shadow. And as Don explained, you have to know what the shadow is before you know whether something is a lock probability form. And the shadow that we get is 24 over L minus 1 times something we call SMR. And SMR is a weight we have theta series, and S21 is theta cubed. So this shadow does reduce for L equals 2 to the shadow for the guy which occurs in there. How much time do I have? Four. Seven minutes. That's really bad. <laughs> I don't write nearly as fast as you do, Don, but I'm still waiting. Anyway, let me, I'll, I'll sort of go as far as I can then. So, um, I want to get a few details of L equals 3. So, at L equals 3, the Jacobi form, written in terms of the basis that Don <coughs> described, is a Jacobi form which I know that you will recognize and love. And it leads to a two component vector value mod modular form. Yeah. 
10 44 and 110, you see 10 44 and 110. And furthermore, so here are the characters of the 2A conjugacy class corresponding to this Z2 normal subgroup. And you will see that the representations which you would attach to this new extension all have trivial Z2 action. And the representations you would attach here all have non-trivial Z2 action. So they correspond to the faithful representations which you got in the book. And in fact, for all values of L greater than 2, our group has the form 2 dot and blue G bar of L. And the, the representations that we associate to these H's have trivial or non-trivial Z2 action, depending on whether R is in the rock. G bar is not in the Sorry? G bar is not in the rock. No, G bar is not always in the rock. You can also notice the discriminator property that I mentioned before. So, for example, the 16 dimensional representation is defined over Q extended by the square root of minus 11. And if you look over here at the character table, and you look at the characters of the 16 dimensional representation, you go over here and you find P11, which is minus 1 times the square root of minus 11 over 2. And if you look at the 10 dimensional representation, that's defined over Q extended by the square root of minus 8, which of course is the same as the square root of minus 2. And if you look at the 10 dimensional representation and scan over, you find an A2 entry, which is the square root of minus 2. All the entries in between here are integers, so these non trivial these algebraic integers, integers and extensions of Q are somewhere rare, and they, they can be read off in some very strange way from the discriminants appearing in this Q expansion. So this is an ingredient that is not present in monster solution. There's no way that I know of reading off the field over which a representation is defined in the monster from the Q expansion of J of power. But here there is some information about that, which is suggestive of some construction. I've lost track of the connection to page 3. There's no connection to That's where you've lost track of it. And in fact, I think five, uh, this is, is a uh, 
order three, and you will note that that one's a equal three. So this is an order three log beta function, and in fact, I think five of the seven log beta functions that Ramanujan defined occur as the k constant series here at L equals three. So this provides another way that these log beta functions occur. This guy also has a very nice combinatoric interpretation in terms of generalized kind of partitions involving the number of partitions minus the rank of the partitions. And here they're showing up in the K. Thompson series associated with this moonshine involvement of the two values. Um, okay, I really have run out of time, I understand. So I will just maybe take two more minutes. So I'll just say a couple of things. So first of all, I feel compelled to give you a list of what these groups are. They don't look particularly wonderful, and they're not even going to find a condition. Well, L2 of P is a group of two by two matrices over the field of P elements. So you get various groups, which are not metric groups. And as the group gets smaller, of course, doing this kind of decomposition becomes harder, because although you're dealing with a smaller group and a smaller representation, then there's more ambiguities to what you do. So there are two keys to unraveling all of this. One is the modular properties of these guys, the twisted, um, the twisted mod modular forms. And uh, we define precisely what these vector value modular forms are in terms of their multiplier system and what subgroup or modular group they should transform under, and then verify that that's the case. And the other essential ingredient, which I unfortunately can't say anything more about, is a property called Lottemacher summability which has been developed for the monster in a paper by Duncan and Twinkle for the K3 N24 story by Chang and Duncan. And similar proofs do not exist yet for the Ungle case, but there's a great deal of experimental evidence because these Rademacher sums essentially define mock modular forms starting with their polar part and averaging them on a congruent subgroup of, of a modular group or PSL2R with a certain multiplier, and then they uniquely produce certain, you can, you can essentially do this sum numerically, and if you get something that's an integer to five significant places, then you assume it's that integer. And um, so we have great experimental evidence because we can produce using this Rademacher summability the K-Thompson series that agree with what we get by analyzing the like So I think I am out of time, and if I say anything else, uh, it should probably be any questions. Thanks for the beautiful talk and other questions. <laughs> so what kind of businesses can you expect if you use the zero point false in the model of K3 instead of the false? I, I don't really know. I mean, uh, I guess it's a generalized version. There's a generalization of the elliptic genus for whether it has any kind of evolutionary property. So you say that analysis is independent of case you can make Well, so, 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 right. so these Jacobi forms for L and N2 are not elliptic genera of any superfluidity. There are some connections of them to sequel forms which appear in the counting of quarter GPS states. That to me is probably one of the closest possibilities of detecting these. 
the, the, the sequel forms also should show up in threshold corrections in the form that Greg and I studied long ago, in certain enables to the back patients of antibiotic strains. So those two examples are the closest I know of trying to connect this to physics, but those are connecting the sequel forms, which you get from the Jacobi forms, and not the mod modular forms, which seem to have these moonshine properties. And so I don't know how to go from those physical examples to something where the moonshine property would be. I just did. Do you those other groups also decide N24? I believe the G bar L's do, but the G L's don't. So two dot N12 is a subgroup of N24, but two dot N12 is not. However, all these groups and uh, we also have experimental evidence for extensions of this, but they're more of the three single level than the five single level. So I'm not <laughs> And all of those groups, you know, and these groups are subject to the convict control, which is also pure in work on the DSM function. I have a question, the comment. I mean, there are, as I didn't get to my talk, there are two interesting patterns of Lockdown forms, in grade one and grade two. In grade two, which is what we studied much more, it turns out that the natural classes also have the efforts of the nature class. And they're very related to these. So the, right. the A6 and the A, the question is, do you look for any kind of moonshine? So they're the infinite, they're the infinite. Well, I feel like you're turning around the question I was trying to ask you, which was whether there was a connection between the weight of half and the weight three halves that you get by these two <coughs> constructions. And it started, well, sorry, it started to ask if it's moonshine story. Well, well no, I, 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 no I, I did not know any moonshine story, but in trying to find one, I was, we were interested in whether there was some way of connecting so given a weight zero index L minus one to 24, I can construct something that has a single pole or a double.